Welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. Uh, before I begin the video, just a quick note. If you didn't watch my previous video comparing the Z8 and the D700 high ISO with JPEGs, I recommend that you watch that now before watching this video. You don't have to, but I think it will make everything a little more clear. Um, I hope you don't mind, but I'm just going to refer to my notes for this. I'm going to read most of this because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Got a lot of comments on that previous video and a lot of people watched it. So I just want to clarify some things and uh, so just follow along with me. Um, so like I said, I received a lot of comments and suggestions after my video comparing the Nikon D700 and Z8 at high ISO. And I compared JPEG images right out of the camera. And my results showed the Z8 had lower high ISO noise, especially at 3200 and above. Some people questioned using JPEGs and said if I shot RAW, the D700 noise would be much better than my JPEG test images. When I originally shot the images, I shot both RAW plus JPEG. And let me just give you a little bit of my test procedures. You, will, you could get more of that from the previous video. But uh, the only lighting I used was the recessed lighting in the room. Same room I'm in now, but I have some LED lights on me. Um, same lens was used for both cameras, a Nikon 50mm 1.8G autofocus lens. Uh, the Z8, of course, had the uh, F to Z adapter so that lens could mount. I took an incident reading and both cameras were set exactly the same for e at each ISO. No variation there. I set custom white balance for each camera using a gray card. They were both set to the same picture control, the standard picture control, and both were set for normal high noise reduction. Now, I chose to use the JPEGs right out of the camera because I thought it would be the fairest way to compare the cameras. But many viewers disagree. So for this video, I went back to my original RAW images and in Lightroom converted them to JPEGs using the same noise settings. Nothing else was changed from the default. The result? The D700 images were much better and we'll be looking at those in a few minutes. Uh, but let me just say, I always shoot RAW. And the reason for that is so I can make exposure adjustments, white balance adjustments, saturation adjustments, uh, among other things. But I didn't realize that noise could be so much lower shooting RAW. Now, I know in Lightroom you can use denoise. I did not use that for any of these images, and that's a great asset. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, though, especially if you're going to um, be converting a lot of images. Now, the Z8, as you will see, the Z8 images are sharper, but that's to be expected. You're comparing a 45 megapixel camera to a 12 megapixel camera. All right, so we're almost ready for the pictures. Uh, but three quick things before we look at the images. The Z8 images were downsized to the same size as the D700 pictures. Lightroom was set to use camera settings, and I have found that works out much better. Previously, I, uh, for when I first started using Lightroom with the Z8, I wasn't doing that, and the image quality is much better when you set Lightroom to use camera settings. And I also want to thank everyone who watched and commented on my previous video. I always try to get it right. And when I don't, I want you to let me know. Now, I don't think I got it totally wrong here. I just didn't realize that the raw images 
convert it to JPEG would be so much better than the JPEG images coming out of the camera. Yeah, I know the, the computer has much more processing power. That's part of it. And I guess Nikon improved their JPEG engine, you know, 15, 16 years after the D700 was introduced. And the JPEGs out of the Z8 are excellent. And some photographers, I always shoot raw, like I said. However, occasionally I will shoot JPEG. If I'm shooting a prom, if I'm actually when I shoot senior portraits, because I'm taking so many pictures, I shoot JPEG. And sports photographers who need to send those images right back to their paper or magazine usually shoot JPEG images. So it's nice to have a camera that produces great JPEG images. So why don't we go look at some images and you can see for yourself. And by the way, these images will be posted uh, into a gallery. I will include the link to that gallery in the description below. Just click on that link and you can download those images and see for yourself. And also in the description below will be a link to the previous video. And in that video is a link to the images used for that video. So take a look at them as well. All right, so let's look at some images. Now, in the previous video, I started at ISO 400, went to 800, and then to 1600. Since there was so little difference, I just started with this one with 1600. Again, these are originally shot raw. The same day I shot the previous video, JPEGs, one right after the other, and um, these are converted. So here we are at 3200, and what an improvement in the D700. The original JPEGs right out of the camera and the raw image converted from the Z8 are very close to one another. Now here we are at 6400. This is the limit of the native ISO on the D700. And again, just a huge improvement. Color-wise, it's they're both very close. I think there's a little more saturation in the D in the Z8. Now here we are at 12,800. Previously, the J JPEG out of the camera from the D700 that was almost an unusable image. Uh, the Z8 image, I believe, is a little bit better, a little less noise. But judge for yourself. Download the JPEGs that were converted from RAW. You will find a link in the description below and you'll be able to see for yourself. Okay, so what did you think of those images? I'm very impressed with the D700. It's amazing that even at 12,800, which is not in the native range of the D700, they look really good if they're processing the RAW images. And there are so many adjustments that can be made when converting from RAW, and that gives us amazing amount of control. So I think it's difficult comparing one camera to another unless everything is set exactly the same. And you could tweak the noise, you could tweak the saturation, you could tweak anything. There's so many controls. So uh, I think that, it again, it's difficult to really see what is the best sensor. So I would love to see your comments. What do you think of these converted RAW images? Now there are many RAW converters. I like Lightroom. I usually use Lightroom. There's Camera Raw in Photoshop and there's many others. DxO I believe has a converter. Some people recommended some other converters. I mean, I don't have the time or I, I don't have a lot of those converters. So let me know what you think, what converters you use. And as always, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your criticism. You know, I don't expect to always be right. And if I got something wrong, please let me know. So I look forward to your comments. As always, I will try to respond to your comments. Now this time I got so many comments, I don't think I responded to everyone. And I try to, to at least give a thumbs up or a thank you to those who responded to my video, to those who commented on my video. And I try to give a little more detailed 
answer if you have questions. So uh, again, please, I apologize if I didn't respond to your comments, but please comment on this video. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And again, a big thank you to all those who watch my video. I think this video of mine got the most views in the shortest period of time of any video I've done over the last three years. So I really, really appreciate that. Okay, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, two thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. I usually publish a new video every Monday morning and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And I want to do a more detailed video on this D700. It seems there's a lot of you out there who really love this camera. I know my son does. This was my son's camera I used for this video. The Z8 was mine. And he really loves it. And I am still amazed that a camera as old as it is, it's what, 16 years old now, can produce such wonderful images. So again, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time.